Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name's Soleil and I garden in zone 5B in mid Michigan. And today we are going to tackle some of the clearance plants that I got. I'm super excited to get some of them in the ground. We're gonna work with the Pieris. We are going to uh, change out one of the pots that is in a sunny area that has some annuals that we, we just got. And if you didn't see that video, go ahead and check it out after this one if you want, but it shows all of the plants and all the information about them. And then when we're done with that, we will also go and plant some Brennera. So we've got some little projects ahead of us today and I hope you can join us. So for today's project, we're going to get started with this Pyrrhus and I've got my Slayer shovel right here and I've got some Biotone. I don't always use Biotone when I do plantings, but because it's kind of the middle of the summer, I want to make sure that the roots get off to a good start and are able to absorb the water and that kind of thing. So I'm just going to give them a little extra protection. We are looking at some rain coming up in the near future, possibly a couple of days. So I thought it would be a good day to get these planted, get them watered in, and then and hopefully they'll get some natural support from that rain afterwards. All right, so this Pieris right here is going to get about five feet tall and five feet wide. So it's gonna get quite a bit bigger. And so before I plant that, I actually am going to take this hosta out right here so that it will have plenty of room. Now I had to think about this for a while as to whether or not I thought it was necessary to actually take this step today. Um, because sometimes I'll plant something and then I'll wait until it gets a little bit bigger before I remove something else that might be kind of close by. But um, based on the growth habit of this Pieris and just how big this hosta is, and because it's the summertime, I want to be able to have plenty of root space for this Pieris. All right, so now we've got quite a bit of space here. Look at that, I still have the hosta tag on it. What was this one called? Oh, that's a blue angel. I'll make sure to keep the tag with that as well. So now I'm just gonna make sure we have a nice big hole for this Pieris. And this is a pretty large pot, so I'm hoping I don't run into too many roots from uh, the maple tree, but I know they're down in here. And my goal is to plant this in a way that it does also kind of help to camouflage a little bit of this downspout here. I know it's not gonna cover the whole thing up, but I'd like to add a little bit of height in this garden bed. Everything's kind of around the same height. We do have some lower growing hostas in the front. But just not a lot of height other than the tree. Definitely some chunky roots in here. The soil does seem like it's still moist from some of the last rains, which is a really good thing. The other reason why I want to plant this Pyrrhus here is because it has evergreen uh, leaves. So even in the winter, it will give us interest. And I really don't have much of that at all in this garden bed. We do have the Geranium macrorhiza that is throughout this garden bed, which is like the large root geranium. And it is, you know, semi evergreen but it's not very tall and it kind of dies back in the winter. And this should provide a little bit of color as well with the little blooms that it has around it. So now I'm just sprinkling some of that biotone around and I wanna make sure that I don't plant this, you know, too deep. And I think it's at just about the right height here. 
So you may notice that I'm not wearing any gloves as I'm doing this planting. And uh, that's because I'm allergic to bees and I got stung by one. Actually, it was a hornet. And as a result of that, I had quite a bit of swelling and rash, had to go to the hospital, etc., etc. Anyhow, I'm fine, but I can't wear a glove because it will irritate it and make it itch more. And now I'm just really trying to press this down in there nice and good so all of the roots have contact with the soil. And I'm going to get it watered in. Just going to give it a really good soak here. Like I said, the soil did feel nice and moist still. So that's positive. And I think we've got some good rain coming. So that should do it. All right, let's move on to our next plant. So we got two of the Pieris, and this is where the other one is going to go in our back shade garden. And I'm going to fill in right here because I have another kind of Pieris that I planted called Cavatine, and it's not doing that well, but you can see this Valley Rose Pieris is doing great. And we have a few of them along here that are gonna get nice and big, and they're going to help like cover up this chain link fence over time. So we're gonna pull the Cavatine Pieris out right here and we're going to replace it with the Valley Rose Pieris and I think that's gonna be a great change out. So let's get it done. Okay, so this Cavatine Pieris is rather small and it has just struggled. It's been in the ground for, this is its third year now and I'm just, I don't know, it's not happy here. So we're gonna take it out. It did put on some new growth this year but you'll see it's got lots of brown foliage on it. And I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be really enjoying this spot. And I'm not sure why, because the other Pieris are doing great. So we'll just uh, switch over to the other one. I mean, we have really great soil back here. It's pretty good. The only thing I can think of is that it was just too dry for that variety or something. Um, I'm just not sure. They all seem to have the same growing conditions. Um, so you would think that if it was good for one, that it would be good for the rest, but apparently not. All right, I think we've got a nice good size hole in here. And I am just going to add some of that biotone again. This time we're gonna put it right in the bottom of the hole. going to take some of this extra soil off of the bottom here. There we go. Try to make sure the best, best is facing forward here. And now we're just going to backfill. Well, that is in and I think it looks good. It's definitely gonna fill out in this area. Like I said, it's gonna get taller and wider. So the two Pieris eventually should actually come really close to touching each other. And it should also reach out towards that Father Gilla as well. So that'll be really pretty over time. All right, let's go fix the pots on the deck. So this is the pot of horrors right now. This uh, should have been really pretty, but it's not. Uh, because it's full of the Russian status that I grew from seed and it really doesn't like it in this area. So I'm going to be pulling that out. I'm going to try to keep some of the alyssum that's hanging over the sides, but there was supposed to be a wonderful, beautiful spike of this, you know, 
Potomac Royal Snapdragon with the beautiful filler of the Russian status and the alyssum spilling over the sides. And no luck, it just looks horrible. So we're gonna take the cage out, we're gonna pull out these um, plants, and we're gonna get in some of the Calibracoas and Supertuna Mini Vistas, and hopefully it will look a whole lot better. So the first thing we're gonna do is just pull this cage off, I think. We'll see how this goes too. This might pull some plants out, because it's actually a full circle. I don't think this is gonna work. Let's get some clippers and start there. All right, we'll take back some of this inner foliage, try and get it out of the way. Well, this stat is pulled out real easy here. I had a couple of pins in here holding this cage in place. So we'll take those out. All right, I think I'm gonna have to cut back this alyssum, but actually that's a fine thing this time of year because it will help it to grow back nice and bushy because it is rather leggy right now as well. And this is gonna help me be able to pull the spear out, the spear out, without ripping the alyssum out. Yeah, those were horrible. I don't know what's up with that. Have any of you grown uh, Russian status before? And if so, how did it grow for you? Did it require lots and lots of water? It just never seemed to really establish its root system in this pot. And no matter how much water I put in, it just, it would pop up for a little bit and then it would say, nope, sorry. And it would flop over and turn kind of brown. Okay, well that looks better already, doesn't it? <laughs> now we're gonna put uh, purple in the center because I love purple. And we're gonna put the pink and purple around the edges. But we'll start with the one that's gonna go in the middle here. Now compared to the soil in the garden, which was very moist, this soil is pretty dry in here. And I would have been watering it just about every single day and making no headway with it. So these are gonna be a little bit more water-wise than the other ones, but we will definitely get them well watered in. So I'm just planting like a stripe down the middle here of the purples, and then we will plant the pinks around it as well. And the purples are the Super Tunia Mini Vistas, and then we have these pink Calibracoa. And this is going to be one of those arrangements that you have to look at and say, yep, in a couple of weeks, this is going to look really pretty. But right now, it's going to take some time to fill in. But 
but I'm okay with that because what I was looking at was about 10 times worse, right? Just didn't have anything going on for it. I think I'm not gonna be able to fit the last one in here. If I try to smush the last one in here, it will be like overkill. So we're not gonna do that, but let me grab the hose and I'm gonna give this a really nice soak. Can't wait to see what this planter is going to look like even just tomorrow after it fluffs up. It's going to look so wonderful. All right, everything looks like it's well settled in. We have some really pretty blooms in here now. And we're just going to let it dry out and we're going to let it fluff up naturally and we'll come back and take a look at it hopefully in our next tour which is going to be coming up soon all right well welcome to the wayback garden and the brunneras that we planted last time we were back here are looking great and so are the lungworts that we have so things are definitely filling in and looking very woodsy and super secret and magical at least to me and we are going to plant some of the bruneras so i have one staged right down here towards the end of this path where it kind of curves around and at that point when we walk through the curve and we get down to the bottom then we're going to come across here and we are going to plant some Brunnera over here. And what I like about the placement of these is that they're just going to provide some really nice silvery foliage that will reflect the light. And it's absolutely beautiful because it is a little bit darker in the shade and it just helps to really highlight the plant. So those are going to look great back there. And then the one other plant we are going to plant is the Japanese fern here. I have this Japanese painted fern that I kind of rescued. I don't know how this is going to do. Things have been bedding down in this one over the years so I dug it up from my garden earlier and kind of revived it and we're going to try it back here and see if it gets eaten alive or not. All right let's get going. Okay I'm going to grab a couple of the weeds that are in this area right here just to tidy it up a little bit. And then we're going to just get this fern in right here. And I'm noticing that right now the soil back here is also really nice and damp, which is great. And the mulch is clearly helping to hold in the moisture back here. This is really good because I have one watering can for all these plants, so they're only gonna get a little bit of water after I put them in the ground. But again, hopefully, we're gonna get a little bit of rain in a couple days and it will help ease these along. I'm just going to put my fingers in there. I kind of go like this with my fingers, like a spider. And hopefully that will help me get it out. And these do not have really very deep roots at all. It's really just about firming this into place and ensuring that it has really good contact with the ground beneath it. All right, that should do it. All right, well, on to the last three Brunera that I have to plant today, the Queen of Hearts. All right, so these Queen of Heart Bruneras were a fantastic deal, and I'm so excited to have more Brunera in this area that I don't have to wait to divide. This is almost going to be a little bit like a moon garden back here because of all of the silvery and white foliage 
and it goes really well with the lamium which has some really nice light colored silvery foliage as well back here but I'm starting to feel like it's more of a garden than just uh, a hill <laughs> a steep hillside that you can't enjoy Wow I don't know if you can see the roots on this, but it is very root bound. So I'm just going to pull them apart. This one's ready to get out of its pot for sure. It's running in circles. All right. I think I need to dig a little deeper here. Uh-oh. I ran into a baby hellebore. That's not good. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to put it between the hellebore and the lungwort got a little too far over to the side here that's okay it might be all right so these brunner do not have a ton of leaves just yet on them they were at home depot or excuse me they were at lowe's and i watched them for a couple weeks before they put them on clearance and you know, they just, they had them in full sun, which is kind of crazy. If you know Brunneros, like they have to have a lot of water if you're gonna put them in full sun. Um, so they're much more happy if you can put them in shade. All right, well that will lighten up that area. And now we're gonna do two over here on this hillside. All right, well this is tough planting conditions right here, you guys, this is, my way back garden and woo, we are on a steep hill and so you have to be careful when you're planting back here find a good foothold now if you've never been in my way back garden before this is a this is a brand new project that i've been working on the most recent garden that I have made and it is in basically my back area where everything is wild we have deer come through here all the time uh, they actually just look at you and stare at you when you wander around back here and don't really care that you're there they're not afraid suburban deer are pretty crazy I think they think they own the neighborhood Anyhow, I have to plant lots of deer resistant plants back here and burner would definitely fit the bill for that. They also need to be groundhog resistant because there is a groundhog that lives under the shed that's right near this hill uh, in our neighbor's garden. And they also have to be rabbit resistant because we also have rabbits that come through here all the time. So super wildlife area. I love wildlife. I love to support it. But I also want to have a pretty garden back here that I can enjoy with the wildlife. So hopefully this is a beginning to that. All right, I'm gonna plant the other Brunnera as well and then I'm gonna grab the watering can and water. Well, we have finished getting the Brunnera in the garden. I did just water them in and I thought I would just walk you through because I know we don't get to walk through this part of the garden as often and I don't always include it in my garden tours because it's still such a work in progress and it's really wild looking and a little bit woolly, but I love it. So um, I find woodland gardens to be a bit enchanting and secret and these three Brunneras on the left are the Jack Frost Brunneras that we planted last week. We have some Diane Claire Lungwort here, 
and then we have the opal lungwort and then following that we have a little bit more of the diane claire lungwort which has that beautiful silver you know almost solid silver center with the spots around it we have lots of sweet woodruff in the area and we have this sandy claw barren wart which is really pretty it's a very unique perennial it's an epimidium and here we have another Jack Frost Brunera with some baby hellebores, which I think next year they are probably going to be big enough where they will bloom. And you'll see I have some divisions of other lungworts that I have taken from my garden here. Another baby hellebore. This is the purple dragon lamium. And in and amongst the lamium, we also have some autumn ferns. And you can see we have some more of that sandy cloud barren wort down there. And I think if you look back, you can just kind of see how the silver lights up the space with the bruneras we just planted. We also have a silver heart Brunera. This one was new to me last year and that came back really well this year. And then we have some Twinkle Toes pulmonaria back here. And there are some baby foxgloves that I've planted, more lamium. And then just recently I was able to plant this golden Hakonicloa grass here. And I'm really looking forward to that patch growing in as well because that will bring a nice brightness to this area and I think we'll add some more hopefully maybe some right in here just as patches to kind of flow down the side of the hill like a waterfall cascade won't that be pretty I think it'll be beautiful well I hope you guys enjoyed this project today we got a lot done in the garden and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you how everything grows on over time and how things turn out. So I appreciate each and every one of you for joining me every time that we have a video. It's so fantastic to have you with me in the garden and I love all of your comments and hearing the things that you're working on and what you're experiencing. It's been great to share information on YouTube. It's been a wonderful experience. So thanks again for joining me and we'll see you next time. Bye!